Welcome back, you found Fritz. Today marks the fourth video in the second season of my creative series. In this video, we'll focus on musical inspiration and dive into some music theory, such as song structure, diatonic triads and seventh chords, chord tones and tensions, and then we'll have some fun with chord analysis, all using our example song for this season called Bad Stuff. Although we're using an original track made by myself as an example, the lessons learned here can be adapted to anything that you're currently working on or any type of music that you're interested in making or producing. Although some of the material here is accessible for even a beginner, it does get more complex as the video goes on. There are some basic understandings about the musical staff, the major scale, and a few other aspects about music theory that are assumed in this video. One last note, if you like any of my videos, then it would really help me if you gave this one a like as well. On top of that, if you'd like to support this one person operation grow, then please subscribe to the channel and share my videos. Or if you're feeling very generous, then you can use the associate links in the description for any of the frequently used or featured products from this channel. Thank you very much and let's jump in. As I mentioned in the first video of this series, it's a good idea to make sure that a song can carry its momentum from the start to the finish with just a vocal and its main accompanying instrument playing. Something else that also plays a vital role in this is song structure which is the arrangement of the different sections of your song, such as the verse, the chorus, and the bridge. However, the majority of songs become much more interesting when they branch out into larger instrument arrangements as well. And of course, my example song for this season is of no exception. This song is heavily inspired by the 90s alternative rock scene. Producing an homage to two 90s bands in particular, the Smashing Pumpkins and Weezer, are the primary inspiration for this song. Also, a lot of unsatisfactory world events spawn the writing of this song, but uh, what these songs are about is not the focus of this channel, so we will not be covering that. Bad Stuff is in the key of G major, and it was written on the guitar using chords created mostly from the G major scale. However, for this song, the pitch of every instrument is tuned down to better suit my vocal range. This shifts the tonal center of the entire scale. This is a common practice utilized by a ton of bands, including Weezer and the Smashing Pumpkins. It's not necessarily about being unable to reach the high notes in a song that you're writing. Sometimes that's not an issue. However, if even after properly warming up, you're finding it difficult to relax and do a comfortable performance, then experimenting with down tuning the song a little bit can be a great solution. Also, you might even like how your instrument sounds tuned down. For the sake of this video though, I will tune back up to the standard of A4 equals 440 for the remainder. So here we have a layout of the different sections from our example song. We have purple for the loudest, blue for transitional or secondary loudest, and green for the most quiet and calm. You'll see that this follows the classic blueprint widely popularized in the 90s with loud intros and choruses counterbalanced with quieter, sparser verses. Most of the chord progressions in this song are made from diatonic triads. Diatonic chords are simply the major, minor, and diminished chords that are constructed from the notes in the key of the song. And triads are three note chords which are able to be stacked vertically in thirds on a staff. Okay, so here we have the musical staff. We're using the G clef since we're on the guitar, and we have an F sharp since we're in the key of G. Here's how the diatonic triad sound arpeggiated on the guitar as written on the staff. There are also diatonic seventh chords, which just adds another major or minor third on top of the triad. And again, here's how they sound arpeggiated on the guitar as written on the staff.
but the majority of rock and pop music is triad based. When switching over to the diatonic seventh chords, the half diminished seventh chord is often called a minor seven flat five. However, they are the same notes. They just come from different backgrounds and arguably serve different purposes. But that argument is outside of the scope of this video. I just thought it helpful to quickly mention this in case there's any confusion. Even though most of the chords in this song are based from triads, there are also other appointments added to many of them in order to add some personality. Using the verse as an example, we can talk about chord tones, tensions, and chord analysis. Okay, so let's play the verse guitar back with some drums for context. Chord tones are simply notes that exist within a chord. For example, here we start on G major. The G major triad contains G, B, and D. Those are chord tones, and they are given numbers representing their interval, or distance in pitch, from the root note. So that would be 1, 3, and 5. Tensions, on the other hand, are notes added to a chord for additional character and, of course, tension. Tensions refer to intervals 2, 4, and 6, but are labeled outside of the first octave at 9, 11, and 13 because they often reside on top of the chord, and they're also considered extensions of the diatonic 7th chord. So let's analyze the verse guitar and see if we can spot any tensions. All right, we start on G, no surprises there. Then we move to some kind of C chord. And this is interesting because a standard C major triad is made of C, E, and G. However, here we don't have an E, which would be our third. Instead, we have a D replacing the E. So you may be tempted to call this a C add nine, because after all, D is the second degree based from our C chord. However, since we don't have a third, but rather we're replacing it with a D, we're calling this a C sus2 chord. Sus is short for suspension, which as a term has been carried over from the Baroque period of classical music. A suspension was marked when a note would carry itself or suspend itself from one chord to the next and then resolve usually to the third. However, the continued usage of this word to describe these chords is somewhat sustained or residual as well, since these sus2 and its friend, the sus4 chords, no longer require any setup or resolution. They can exist on their own. However, they usually do resolve to the third because they sound like they want to be resolved. So using our C chord as an example again, I think you'll be able to hear that the sus chords want to resolve naturally. So here's the sus4. Back to C. And here's the sus2. And then resolved back to C. Moving on, we have this chord. And something interesting as well that we can analyze a little further. So let's write it out exactly as it's played on the guitar. Well, we start with an F sharp in the bass. Then we mute the fifth string. We have an open D. An A on our third string. An open B. And another F sharp on the first string. So as written, you might look at this and say that it's an F sharp minor 11 six chord. F sharp because that's the root and the most represented note. Minor because of the strong minor third from F sharp to A. 11 because that's our tension represented by B and six because of the D. However, then you might say that this is actually a D6 chord with an F sharp in the bass, because you can build a D major triad fully, and then B would be your six, 
And this looks much cleaner as well when we're doing our analysis. And I would agree with you. However, as I've mentioned in the past, it can be helpful to view your entire song as one big instrument. And while this alleged D6 chord is playing, we also have a strong vocal presence here as well. And that vocal is singing a C. If we're thinking in terms of our larger instrument, then this adds a tritone to our chord. And where do we so commonly find this devilish interval? Why in the diatonic diminished chord in the major scale of our key, of course. And since we're in the key of G major, F sharp is that diminished chord, right? Well, yes, but don't let this devil fool you, because this isn't really the tritone from the diminished F sharp chord at all. No, we also have a naturally occurring C somewhere else in our diatonic chords. Remember I mentioned the diatonic seventh chords from the major scale as well? Well, in the dominant seventh chord, which is D7 in the key of G, we also have this magical C as a minor seventh from the root note of D. So therefore we can unconditionally call this a D13 over F sharp chord. D because we have our D major triad, 13 because we have our seventh interval present and a B in our chord, and over F sharp because that's what's played in the bass. Now, in my opinion, this chord doesn't sound all that great when played in context on the guitar, but when we move the C to another instrument, the vocal, it separates itself and allows the guitar to breathe a bit more. So even if you think that what I just said is theoretical blasphemy, it's still a good idea to remember that what is played on the guitar sonically affects everything else in your arrangement, your mix, and vice versa. Now, even though we just scratched the surface regarding music theory for a simple rock song, that's probably enough for one video. When you're writing your song, constantly thinking about music theory is not always the most exciting approach. Most of the time, experimentation and going from feeling can be more fun. However, building a base layer of knowledge around music theory can help spark new ideas and it can help get you out of the weeds if you find that you're getting stuck somewhere. In the next video, however, we're gonna ditch the theory and talk about the guitars, focusing on the recording methods, the different parts, specifically the Smashing Pumpkins inspired layers of fuzz guitar in the choruses and the pre-chorus, and how difficult it can be to ditch parts that sound cool, but that otherwise just aren't working. Again, I really hope that you've taken away something useful from this video, and if you have, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more stuff. And don't forget to use the links in the description if you'd like to help me out. Other than that, be excellent to each other. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.